Hello world, Kyle here with NimbleNoggin.io and today we're going to talk about the NS Calendar object and also include a little bit with NS Date components. Since we are on the third most important class or method or way of working with NS Dates and we've covered NS Dates and NS Date formatters so now we're going to talk about NS Calendars and the way we can divide these up is an NS date is a way to store a date. NS date formatter is a way to present a date. And using NS calendar and NS, cal NS date components is a way to work with or edit dates. So, what I'm doing on view did load of the UI stepper view controller is we are creating a new NS calendar using the Gregorian calendar identifier so that this NS calendar is using the Gregorian calendar. I'm creating an NS date components object using the current date and this components object I'm only going to worry about the day so in this case it's October 2nd 2015 so this components object will have a property called day that will be set to the value 2 so we are setting the date steppers value property to a double of the components dot day property so behind the scenes in this view controller the value that the stepper is keeping track of is going to be the day of the month and we can see that that's important down here when in the adjust date method which is called anytime we press the plus or minus button of this date stepper here. So in this method what's going on is that I am getting another NS date components object on the component day of the date shown in the date label here. So let's actually change this a few days Thursday October 8th 2015 so that this, dates com this date components object here will have a property called day with the value of 8 because that is the day of the NS date displayed in this label and what we're actually going to do is compare that components dot day to the date steppers value and as we saw in view did load we were setting the value to the NS date components day property of whichever day that the that the date was on so I'm actually going to put a breakpoint here and I'm gonna press this one more time so we have pressed this so at the end of this execution the date will increment to October 9th but right now the date steppers value property is going to be 8 so after we've hit this plus button UI kit is automatically going to increment the this stepper by the value that we told it to and it's just going to increment it by one so with this logic down here we are going to check the components the NS date components date of the date in the date label against the value property of the NS date stepper so since we hit the plus button the components dot day value is actually going to be less than the date steppers current value and in this situation the components dot day value is eight and the UI steppers value is going to be 9. We will end up in the else block of this if statement and basically the difference between the if block and the else block here in the if statement is in the else block we are going to be adding one day and above that in the if part of the if statement we are going to be subtracting one day. So since we hit the plus button we're going to be adding a day and the way we do that is again using NS calendar and we're assigning this currently nil step date object to an NS date that is one day in the future of the date that we pass in and we are doing that using this date by adding unit method and we are specifying the unit that we want to add which is day we are specifying the value that we want to add which is just one and then we are passing in the NS date that we want to make that addition to so that is the NS date that we got from the date label here so it's pointing to October 8th and since we are passing since we are incrementing the day by positive 1 when we continue this program execution it's going to say October 9th so the NS date of this date label is actually 
going to point to October 9th. And almost the same thing happens when we go back by one day is we are using this date by adding unit method, specifying the unit day. The value that we pass in is now negative one since we want to go back one day. We are editing this date that we got from the date label. And we are passing in an option called search backwards. And this only comes into play when you are going to go backwards over a month. So if you press the minus button here, it should go to September which it does. But if we hadn't specified that search backwards method, it's only going to search forwards. So at the end of a month or the beginning of a month, if you were to go backwards to a previous month, the NS calendar would actually see that, hey, this number, since we're only searching forward, the next time we come across this number is the next month. So instead of saying September 30th, it would actually say November 30th. But since we specified the search backwards option, it's going to look backwards. So correctly went to September. So I'm just getting an NS date components object again on the date component using this new step date object that we got from the if statement. And then I am setting the correct values on the stepper and the date label here. Even though this was a specific example, I hope it showed how you can use an NS calendar and NS date components to edit and work with a date. And it's easy enough to use other elements of a date. We can actually specify the year, the month. Can you specify the time? I think you can specify the time. And you can use any value you want. You don't have to go one day forward or one day back, one hour forward, one hour back. You can do what you need to do with this. You can actually, if you wanted to advance by a year, you could specify in this date by adding unit method, you could set the unit to year and then the value to one, or you could even set the unit to month and then add a value of 12. So it would add 12 months to the current date, which is the same as adding one year. There's a lot you can do with it, but it's going to follow a lot of the same structure at least when editing a date like this. So hopefully you now know after these three videos enough to work with dates on your own or at least get started with working with dates on your own. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.